Okay, good evening, everyone. And uh, I'm happy to be with you again. Uh, glad to see as many as I can see. I don't see everybody. Uh, today we will be dealing with Revelation chapter five. And before we go into Revelation chapter five, we would review Revelation chapter four. Now, last day we talked about Revelation chapter four. We talked about the scene in heaven. We talked about transitioning from Revelation two and three to Revelation chapter four. We said in Revelation two and three, it was situated on earth. We said that uh, Revelation two and three dealt with the seven churches. And that is a 2000 year history of the churches. And then um, we said between Revelation three and Revelation four, the rapture is gonna take place. We said the scene changed, it changed from earth. John said he heard a voice that said, come up hither and I will show you the things which shall be hereafter. So this is the third section to the book of Revelation, the third of the outline in the book of Revelation. And John said, and I saw an open door in heaven. And the first thing he saw in heaven was a throne, a throne set in heaven. That's the first thing that John saw, Revelation chapter four, verse two. This throne will be with us until Revelation chapter 22. So as we go along, we will accumulate certain items that will, that will go with us throughout the book of Revelation. So John said, uh, he saw a throne set in heaven. We said that throne was planted in heaven. And that is a permanent fixture in heaven. John said he saw someone sitting on the throne. He did not describe the person that he saw on the throne, but he said that he was to look upon as a sardine and a jasper stone. And we said that the jasper and the sardine stone was the first and the last in the breastplate of the high priest. And God is the first and the last. So the person sitting on the throne was none other than the father himself. Uh, we saw a rainbow around about the throne. The rainbow was a complete circle and it was a green in color. And we said green or emerald is the color of Judah. That was important. And we will see that with us for today's lesson also. Then we saw 24 thrones, 24 seats and 24 elders sitting on the throne. And we talk about the number 24. We said in Revelation 1, 2, and 3, we had the, the domineering number was number seven. And now we see the number 24. We said, it, we said the number 24 uh, is comprised of two Hebrew words, kaf and dalet, which is equal to 24. Kaf and dalet, when, when put together, is spelled kad. And we said that the word kad means uh, a, a pitcher, a pitcher to contain water. We said the number 24, um, we said the Torah, a metaphor for the Torah is water and the pitcher is what carries the water. That's the Old Testament. In the New Testament, the word, which is the Torah was made flesh, which is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ said, he is the living water. And again, we have, uh, the church in the New Testament that carries the living water to the world. We said the number 24 comprised of 12 in the Old Testament, which is the 12 tribes of the children of Israel and the 12 apostles in the New Testament. And they comprise of the, the 24 elders. The 24 elders will be remaining with us all the way until Revelation 19 verse four. So, Two items so far, we, in fact, three items. We have the throne, we have the one sitting on the throne, and we have the 24 elders. They will be throughout the book of Revelation. John is setting the stage for what is going to take place in the book of Revelation in the tribulation period. 
he is setting the stage for all of this to take place. We saw seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which is the seven spirits of God. We will also talk about that today. And then we saw the sea of glass. We said that uh, John saw proceeding from the throne, lightning, thunder, uh, and voices. And we identify lightning, thunder, and, and voices, lightning, thunder, and rumbling with a storm. However, in uh, front of the throne, it was a, there was a sea of glass, which means perfect calm. Now, the other item that we will see in, from Revelation chapter 4, verse 6, there were four living creatures. We talk about the four living creatures at length. The number four represents earth. The four living creatures are called seraphims. Uh, the singular is seraph. And uh, seraphims are plural, and there were four of them. We said the seraphims are different from the cherubims. We said the cherubims, they have one creature have four heads. Yeah, the head of a lion, the head of a man, the head of an eagle, and uh, the head of a calf. In Revelation, these four creatures each had one head. The difference is, uh, the other difference is the cherubims had four wings. With two wings, they cover their body, and two wings, they fly. The seraphims have six wings. Two, they cover their faces. Uh, uh, two, they cover their feet. And two, they fly. Now, I did not tell you this last day, but the, they, they are called the burning ones. The seraphims are called the burning ones or the fiery serpents. So when they move, they, they generate a, a lightning effect and their, their, their voices and their wings rumble. So this is what John was probably seeing on that day. We said in Isaiah chapter 6, we saw the seraphims for the first time. And they were their position in heaven is above the throne of God flying in the four, uh, the four winds, the four directions. That's their position. The cherubims, they are under the throne of God, but they are all waiting. They are ministering servants to God himself. And you remember in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 6, uh, when Isaiah saw the uh, 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 God on the throne, he realized how sinful he was. And he was saying, oh, what a wretched man I am. Uh, I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell among unclean people. And he started to confess his sins. And one of the cherub flew to the altar, took a live coal and touched him on his lip. And he said, now you are clean because this coal has purified you. So this is what we saw in Revelation chapter four. Um, the things to remember is the throne set in heaven, the person sitting on the throne, the 24 uh, uh, other thrones and the 24 elders, which represents the Old Testament and the New Testament saints, the Holy Spirit, and the four creatures. Now, let's go on to our lesson for today. This is a hand, a right hand, holding a scroll with one seal. This is important. This is my background picture, but I just wanted to explain this to you. You will see the seal and it has a, a nail print hand on it. Well, that is neither here nor there. However, it's a scroll with one seal in the right hand. Let's see what Revelation chapter 5 verse 1 says. And I saw in the right hand on, of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. So he that sit on the throne, he will be, he will be with us, like I said, throughout the book of Revelation till Revelation chapter 21. So this is an important person to pay attention to. He sitting on the throne had a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. Now, let us look at some books. This is what we know, what we will call a book. That is not what we are talking about. This is a scroll sealed with seven seals. But there's a problem with this. This seals, these seals 
you have to open all seven seals before you could read anything in the book. This is not what we are talking about. And then you have another scroll up here, roll around both sides, and it will roll to the middle. This is not what we are talking about. So what are we talking about? This is a scroll with one seal, like the first one that I showed you in the first slide. It has one, let me see if I could get the pen. All right, this here is the only seal on this scroll so far. So what you have to do, you have to open the first seal, open the book, you can read the contents of the first seal. And then you open the second seal and you read the contents of the second seal. Now I have another picture of that, which is this one. This here is the first seal. When you open this seal, you can read from this point to this second seal. In order to get to the, the other information, you have to open this seal and then you get to the, the, the second page. Then you open the third seal and so on and so on until you reach the seventh seal. When you reach the seventh seal, then the book will be open. But as you open one seal at a time, you can read. This is what is taking place in the book of Revelation. Let's go on. So where did this book come from? You know, this book just appeared. Now I believe, I believe that there are certain things John will talk about as he see fit or as he is led by the Holy Spirit. Where did this book come from? There are some portions of scripture in the Bible. For example, this is Ezekiel chapter two, verse nine. And when I looked, this is Ezekiel talking, behold, a hand was sent unto me and lo, a roll of a book was therein. So John's, uh, uh, Ezekiel saw a hand projected out to him with a roll of a book and in his hand and he spread it before me and it was written within and without and there was written within lamentation and mourning and woe this seems to be the book that is in the hand of him that sits on the throne but how can we tell we don't know but it is so similar to what john saw and then look at the contents of the book he had lamentation he had mourning and he had woe. When we read the book of Revelation, we will see a lot of that. Let's continue. That is one school of thought about where the book could come from. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. This is the book of Daniel. God told him to seal the book, even to the end, the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Now, God told Daniel to seal up this book and just shut it up. Now, if God told Daniel to shut the book in the contents of the Bible, I personally believe that he will open the book in the contents of the Bible. And when you study the book of Daniel, to, when, in fact, you should always study the book of Daniel together with the book of Revelation to get a clearer picture of what is taking place. So is this book, the book of Daniel? That is two school of thought that is, that is being spread around. Now the third school of thought is that that book in the hand of him that sits on the throne is the deed, D-E-E-D, -E -D, the deed for the earth. I don't have scriptures to back that up, but we will discuss this later on as we go into this chapter. So, so far, we see the book in the hand of him that sit on the throne. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Revelation chapter 5, verse 2. Who is worthy? He was proclaiming, shouting out loud. Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. Now, the fact that it's a strong angel have to mean something. John saw a strong angel. 
what is a strong angel? Maybe he was muscular. Maybe he was superior in height. But John said he was a strong angel. He was saying who is worthy to take the book. Now look at this. And no man in heaven, nor on earth, nor under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. No man in heaven. Remember we talked about this scene being in heaven. They were looking for a man in heaven to open the book. What does that tell us? There were people in heaven at that time. There were people in heaven at that time when they were looking for a man, a male human being, to open that book. No one could be found on earth nor under the earth. Well, the people under the earth will be the dead people. The people on earth will be those who did not go in the rapture. And the, the men in heaven will be from the 24 elders. Now, in that group of the 24 elders, you have men like Moses. You have men like Elijah, men like Elisha, Isaiah, Daniel. You have uh, Adam, Eve. All these people would be included in that 24 but no man was found worthy in heaven. Why were they looking for a man in heaven to open that book? Because it takes only a man to open that book. Let's go on. No man in heaven, no on earth, no under the earth. Now, these guys, 119 Ministry, I don't know if anybody is familiar with them. Uh, their website would be 119 Ministries or testeverything.org. They are very good, very good in Hebrew roots. They are very good in Hebrew scriptures. I listen to them all the time. But I would advise when you listen to everybody or anybody, you test everything. They said test everything. Now they have a theory. And they said the reason why they could not find a man in heaven was Jesus wasn't in heaven as yet. They said the reason why you could not find a man on earth was because Jesus just left earth. This, they are saying this event happened at the ascension of Jesus. Jesus just left Mount Olives and he was traveling between heaven and earth when the angels say who is worthy to take the book. Now that is so wrong. From our little lesson so far, we see that is wrong. And why is that wrong? You have to know what you believe when you are listening to other people. And you have to know where they are wrong when you are listening to other people. Now, the ascension took place before Pentecost. All right? So Jesus went up to heaven before Pentecost. The church started on Pentecost. So then we have 2,000 years of church history, and then this event was taking place. So when they say that Jesus was in transit between uh, earth and heaven, that is wrong by 2,000 years. I just wanted to put that in so that you would know how to, uh, you know, understand what other people say and see who is right and who is wrong. Now, you see a lion in my background, a beautiful lion. I wept much because no man was found worthy to open the book and to read, uh, to open and to read the book, neither to, to look there on. John started crying. John started sobbing. John was sobbing uh, uh, verbally when he saw that no man was found worthy to open the book. Uh, one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. Now, I would stick with this for a, 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 a second. The Lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. Uh, and I will give you my lion. The Lion of the tribe of Judah. The word prevail means to prove stronger than the opposition. To prove stronger than the opposition. Jesus said in, in John chapter 16, verse 33, 33 these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In this world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. 
I have prevailed. Jesus prevailed as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now, there's another portion to this. All right. Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. The root and the offspring of David. This is a tree that was cut down, and we have an offspring. We have a branch growing. The root is of David, and the offspring, the offspring is of the root of David. This is what we are, Jesus is talking about. Now, when Judah was young and his father was blessing him, he said, Judah is a lion whelp. From the prayer, my son, thou, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall roast him up? We are talking about Judah. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. Shiloh is Jesus. Uh, unto him shall the gathering of the people be. And in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 10, and in that day, there shall be the root of Jesse, and it shall, and uh, to it shall the Gentiles seek, and the rest shall be glorious. Jesus said in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. Who was Judah? Judah was the fourth son of Jacob. Jacob, uh, his name was changed to Israel. Jacob was the son of Isaac. Isaac was the son of Abraham. Abraham was called from Ur of the Chaldees to serve the Lord. So we have Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And from Jacob, Judah was the fourth son of, of Jacob. Now from Judah, nine generations down, we had a guy named Jesse. So he was the son of Judah. He was the father of King David. And, and King David was uh, the lineage of the, uh, the earthly father of Jesus. What are we saying? The line of the tribe of Judah shows Jesus' DNA. It shows that Jesus Christ is human. It shows his lineage. This is Jesus' genealogy. This is one of the things that qualify Jesus to take the book out of the hand of God the Father. This is one of the reasons why Jesus was able to take the book out of the hands of God the Father. And just when we think we have it right, we saw a lamb. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven heads and seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. So we saw the line of the tribe of Judah that tells us Jesus was human. They were looking for a man to take the book out of the hands of God the Father. Jesus being the line of the tribe of Judah, that qualify him to take the book out of the hands of God the Father. What did John say? The next day John said Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God. Now we are seeing the other side of Jesus, which taketh away the sins of the world. Now, when the disciples were looking at, at the man Jesus walking down the road, they saw Jesus. When John looked at John, when John looked at Jesus, he saw the Lamb of God. That was through the eyes of the Holy Spirit. That is what John saw through the eyes of the Holy Spirit. And then um, the next day, he, he looked at, uh, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And you know the story, the disciples follow Jesus, and then they spend the night with him uh, where he dwell. So we saw the human side of Jesus, which is a lion of the tribe of Judah, and, and Jesus prevailed as a human being. Jews, Jesus overcame as a human being. Jew, Jesus, he had the victory. Remember the three temptations of Jesus. Uh, re remember the victory at the cross. Jesus had 
the victory Jesus had prevailed as a human being. Now we are seeing Jesus as the Lamb of God. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. This is as the Lamb of God. And this is a picture of the Lamb that was slain. And, and uh, John said, and, I, and the Lamb stood, and as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. The fact that the Lamb stood and it had been slain tells about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now the seven horns and the seven eyes speak to us of a different story. The seven horns and the seven eyes. Uh, when I wrote this, I thought there were only three attributes of God. And, and I said that this is two of the three attributes of God. The seven horns and the seven eyes. Seven horns, horns mean power. Seven means all complete, entire, thus all power, omnipotent. Sec, uh, Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Seven eyes, all seeing, uh, all knowing, omniscient. This is the second attribute of God. Jesus said, I am he that searcheth the reins and the hearts. And we, we dealt with this before. Jesus is all knowing. Jesus is all powerful. And really there are five. Five attributes of God according to Maya Pullman. So... The two, uh, the, the two things that the Lord showed us um, when uh, the Lion of the tribe of Judah and the Root of David, that is two. And on God's side, the seven eyes and the seven horns, that is the attributes of God. So Jesus was a combination of God and man. Now the seven spirits of God. Um, this is uh, the first time we saw the seven spirits of God was Revelation chapter 1. Verse 4, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And then uh, Revelation chapter 4, verse 5, we see the seven lamps of fire burning, which are the seven spirits of God. We said that the, we cannot see the spirit unless he manifests himself. He manifests himself as seven lamps of fire burning. And I gave you seven lamps of fire. I always wanted to do that. The seven lamps of fire. John said, uh, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. So I give you seven eyes. These are seven sheep eyes that represents the seven spirits of God. And what, what you should see is that throughout the book of Revelation, the triune God is working together. We saw that in Revelation chapter 1. We see that in Revelation chapter 4 and 5. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that, sit, that sat on the throne. This is the main event of the book of Revelation. It's the, uh, the, the book of Revelation, also Revelation chapter 4 and 5. The main event. Jesus came and took the book out of the hand of him that sit on the throne. Now, we saw Jesus as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. We saw Jesus as the Lamb of God was taken away the sins of the world. The question is, we will be there, and how will we see Jesus? Will we see him as a lion? Will we see him as a lamb? No, we will not see him as that. We will see Jesus as Jesus. This is John's vision, and this is what the Holy Spirit is revealing to John about Jesus. That is why John saw the lion. That is why John saw the lamb, to, to explain the characteristics of the lion and the lamb in the book of Revelation. This is uh, John's vision. We will see Jesus as he is. We will see the man Jesus walking up to the throne and taking the book out of the hand of him that sit on the throne. And when he had taken the book, all of heaven broke loose. All of heaven broke loose. The four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one harps and golden vials full of odor, which are the prayers of the saints. So he, he takes the book out of the hands of the Father. And immediately, worship always started with the four living creatures. The four living creatures started worship in Revelation chapter 4. 
the four living creatures that worship in Revelation chapter 5. And the four and 20 elders, they fell down before the Lamb. We saw in Revelation chapter 4, the end of Revelation chapter 4, where they worship him that sit on the throne. All worship was directed to the Father in Revelation chapter 4. Now worship is directed to the Lamb in Revelation chapter 4. So we have golden vials full of odor, which are the prayers of the saints. Now these vials, they are golden and they are full of odor. And the contents of this is the prayers of the saints. Now in this uh, vision in Revelation 5, Revelation 4 and 5, we did not see the, 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 alt, the altar of incense. This is a picture of the altar of incense where incense is offered before the Holy of Holies and the smoke goes up and uh, the fragrance goes up to God. That is what it looks like. John did not tell us that that altar was there. However, I would like to say that altar was in the midst. And for some reason, the Lord did not tell us about it. I guarantee you, later on in the book of Revelation, in that same scene, we will see that altar. Now, the vials full of odor of the prayers of the saints. These, this, these prayers were collected over the centuries until the vials were full. This is not an immediate prayer that was answered. This is a prayer that, that, was, that was prayed since in Matthew chapter 9, verse 6. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. At this point, when Jesus take the book out of the hands of God the Father, this is when that prayer will be answered. And when you teach your Sunday school kids this prayer, when you teach your little children and grandchildren this prayer, when you kneel them with your kids and pray uh, before they go to bed at night, that prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven, is accumulated in these vials and it will be poured out on this day when Jesus take the book out of the hands of God the Father. This is what, what this is the prayer that is being answered in, in Revelation chapter 5, verse 8. The golden vials full of odor. Now, all the Christians, all, all the saints, all the raptured saints will have a vial full of odor that was collected, and all will be going up. To the throne of God. It has to go up in an, in, a, in an altar. That is why I say the altar of incense is somewhere around and we will see it later on in the book of Revelation. And they sang a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou wast slain. So we saw Jesus as having human DNA. And if I may say, I, uh, this term could be wrong, but divine DNA. Jesus possessed human DNA and divine DNA. This qualifies him to take the book out of the hands of God, of God the Father. Now, what really sealed the deal, what make him worthy to take the book is he was slain. He said, no man uh, 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 take my life from me. I laid down my life so I can take it up again. And for greater love than this hath no man, that a man would lay down his life for his friend. Jesus was slain, and that is the reason why he was worthy to take the book. And hath redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Now, we have seen pictures and we have spoken about the 24 elders in Revelation chapter 4 at length. And we said they represent the 12 nations of Israel, uh, the 12 tribes of Israel, and the 12 apostles in the New Testament. Now, in the Old Testament, there was one nation. That was Israel. There were only one nation. Uh, and God said that you shall be a peculiar people, a holy uh, nation, etc., etc. Now, when we come to the New Testament, when it was that, that promise was given to us, that we will be a holy nation and a royal priesthood. 
we joined to Israel. We, we, were, um, we were grafted into Israel. So there was not two different priesthood. There was one priesthood. Now the second half of the priesthood, which is us in the New Testament, we are of every kindred and every tongue and every people and every nation. This is how the, the whole priesthood uh, is swollen to, uh, to uh, en enclose everybody on the face of the earth. And in verse 10, and has made us uh, unto our God kings and priests. That really should read a kingdom of priests, like we see in the Old Testament and we see in, in, in the New Testament. It's a kingdom of priests. We are now together with Israel, a kingdom of priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So they sang a new song. This is the first new song in the, in the book of Revelation. Now, and I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and about the, the beasts and the elders, and the number of them were 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. They said the number 10,000 times 10,000 really should be written an uh, innumerable number times innumerable number and add a couple of thousands of thousands just to make sure, just to make sure you have it right. Now, in this room, this is just the angels. This is not the 24 elders. This is beside the 24 elders. So there were numerable numbers times numerable, numerable numbers plus thousands of thousands. And then you had the elders and then you had the four beasts. And saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. So this is the second song that was sung. All right. Uh, uh, this, this is what the angels were singing. Now the angels could not sing the first song. They could not join in the first song because Christ did not die for the angels. They were not redeemed. And if I were to go back for a second. Now look at this. Uh, and has redeemed us to our God. He, to redeem means to buy back. We were lost. We were lost in sin. And because of the blood of Jesus, we were brought back into the kingdom of God and to our God. So that is important to remember. The angels couldn't sing that because they were not redeemed. But they joined in the choir, the choir and they were singing also. Now look at this. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, Heard I saying, blessing and honor and glory and power to him that sit on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Now, all the creatures, all the other creatures in heaven join in the praise. The creatures on earth join in the praise. The creatures under the earth join in the praise. The creatures in the sea join in the praise. And they worship him that sit on the throne and the Lamb. So this is universal worship of the Lamb, universal worship of the Lamb. And the four beasts and the four, the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worship him that liveth forever and ever. Now, where did that start? It started in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 23, where the whole universe will worship him that sit on the throne. I have sworn by myself. This is Jehovah speaking. He sworn by himself because there is none greater than he is. So he swore by himself. The word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. So this is the first time this was occurred. That every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. This happened thousands of years ago and we have a vague picture of it now as we get closer romans chapter 14 verse 11 for it is written as i live said the lord every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to god so we get a little clearer picture now as we come closer again this is uh wherefore god also had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. 
We are getting a clearer picture now. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth. So it's the name of Jesus. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. So this started way back hundreds and th thousands of years ago with the prophet, the prophet Isaiah. And it is fulfilled in Revelation chapter 5. Now, I want, I want you to think back for a second that when Jesus died on the cross, we know about it because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they wrote about it. So we know that Jesus was nailed to the cross. Jesus was pierced on the side. Jesus was given uh, vinegar to drink uh, and stuff like that because John was there. John saw it. We saw it from the earthly point of view. But do you know that there's a heavenly side to that story that we don't know about? We don't know what was going on in heaven while Jesus was dying on earth. We don't know that. Because remember uh, what the devil said? Uh, uh, jump down from the, from the temple because he shall give his angel charge over thee, least you dash your foot against a stone. These angels were there to protect Jesus even if he hit his foot on a stone. They're supposed to protect him. But now he was dying on the cross. He was pierced. He was nailed to the cross. Could you imagine the agony that these angels who were supposed to protect him was in? We don't know the other side to the story. Do you remember when Jesus uh, was in the grave? We know about Jesus being in the grave. We know about Jesus resurrected. We don't know what happened behind the scenes. But there is a story. Do you remember when Jesus was ascended to heaven? Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here? Uh, gazing up into heaven, the same Jesus will come again and receive you. Uh, we know the story from the earthly side, but we don't know what happened in the heavenly side. We don't know if at the pearly gates there was welcome home Jesus. We don't know that. We don't know if the angels were with trumpet on both sides of the, the streets of heaven. Welcome in Jesus. We don't know that. But today in Revelation chapter 5, we are on the other side of the story. We are in the heavenly side of the story. We are seeing what takes place in heaven when Jesus took the book out of the hand of him that sits on the throne. That is a big deal. This is I, I wouldn't say as important as Jesus dying on the cross, but it is up there. It is important because this is something that is, that is extremely important. John chapter 5, verse 22. For the Father judgeth no man, but all judgment is committed to the Son, unto the Son. What is the big deal about Jesus taking the book from the hands of the Father? The big deal is... The power to judge is transferred from God the Father to Jesus. The power to take control of everything in heaven as on earth as it is in heaven was given to Jesus. Things will change from this point on. This is a new era starting. Salvation is no longer free. Jesus is no longer walking in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. This is why this is so important. Jesus is handing over. In fact, the Father is handing over the power to Jesus to judge the world, to take control of everything. You will, we will see later on in the book of Revelation that you don't call on the name of the Lord to be saved. You get your head cut off in order to be saved. Today, call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Salvation is free today. If you believe in your heart, and you confess with your mouth, you shall be saved today. In that day, it's different. It's a new era. Jesus is no longer walking among the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Jesus is the judge. Jesus is the soon coming king. Jesus will be the one officiating at the Bema judgment. Jesus will be the one officiating at the great white throne judgment. Jesus is the one who will be coming back as king of kings and lord of lords. In Revelation chapter 19. And it all starts here with Jesus taking uh, the power being transferred from God the Father 
to God the Son. This is why this is so important. This is why this chapter is so important that, that you read it, you reread it, you take your time to understand it. You're going to find a book in the hands of the Father, into the hands of Jesus, and that book will take us throughout the book of Revelation. You find that the 24 elders will go with us throughout the, the tribulation. You will find that the, the four creatures will go with us throughout the revelation. So the stage has been set for the next seven years and then a thousand years after that. The stage has been set for 1,007 years in Revelation chapter uh, four and Revelation chapter five. So the main event was Jesus taking the book or receiving the power to do God's will from Revelation chapter five throughout the end of the book of Revelation.